Yes. Uh, chair yes. recognizes Mr. Moore back. of Alabama. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, certainly want to thank all the witnesses for being here today. You know, I've said this before and I'll say it again, that a closed border, a controlled border is actually a compassionate border. And not just for the migrants who get turned in to endangered servants, or worse, but for the Americans that some of these illegal aliens harm. Um, for example, in my district, in the 2nd Congressional District of Alabama, a couple of weeks ago, a Tauga County Sheriff uh, Department arrested Gravy Zavala, a 29-year-old illegal alien from Honduras for the rape of a teenage girl in Prattville. It's alleged that he drug her into a bathroom in a restaurant. Um, press reports indicate that he entered the United States in November 2021 through Texas using a fake name, but was allowed to enter into this country. In addition, according to the press reports, he had a criminal record in Honduras. Um, I don't know how this is possibly acceptable. And Ms. Nobles, unfortunately, uh, you and your family know this all too well. And I am terribly sorry for what happened to you and your daughter. I'm a proud father of four. I got two girls and a granddaughter that'll be born probably by Friday, I understand. That's what the experts are saying. Anyway, we should never let this happen. And so, uh, Mr. Hetfield, I want to kind of go to you initially. You, you said we got a lot of people coming to this country that are not qualified. What do you mean by that? The, um, the, the only way for many people to come into this country is through the asylum system. That's the only way to be able to um, not be expeditiously removed at the border is to claim a fear. So of course, people are, being, uh, are using that pathway if they're coming here for reasons that do not qualify them for asylum, such as um, they, they need to support themselves, uh, they're trying to escape poverty, they're trying to reunite with family, um, which is why we need to have an asylum system that, that functions and efficiently determines whether or not somebody has a legitimate asylum claim or not. Good. Mr. Hetfield, let me ask you this. I was in Yuma, Arizona. We had, this is our third hearing. We had one in the district in Yuma, or actually on the border. And uh, the sheriffs informed us there that uh, basically they're just, the border agents have become concierge. They're just giving these people motion to appear, an $800 uh, taxpayer-funded subsidy and a cell phone. And then when we take their calls for court dates, they're not, they're not, they'll take our phones, but they're not taking our calls. Do you find that alarming that we're just turning people loose with very little background checks? Um, I find it very alarming that people are getting lost in the system waiting for years to get an asylum hearing. That doesn't work for anybody. Speaking of lost in the system, we, we heard a few weeks ago that we had lost 85,000 unaccompanied minors. The federal government had shipped them to Google addresses in America, and now it sounds like, based on testimony, they're not all minors, and there are actually some of them here doing a great deal of harm. Uh, Mr. Scott, I want to ask you a question real quick. Um, you know, I heard prices uh, people had on their heads for coming to this country just south of the border. Last time I heard, it was about six or seven thousand dollars coming out of Mexico, uh, further south. Triangle Nations, about nine or ten thousand dollars, and then Syria was twenty thousand dollars. Russians were paying nineteen thousand dollars, and Chinese nationals were paying eighty thousand dollars. Where is that money going? You think, Mr. Scott? It goes directly to fuel the cartels. It fuels our car the cartel. And what happens if somebody doesn't have the money? Do they actually become indentured servants or slaves? Is that what happens? So that is one of the uh, many things that could happen. The prices vary depending on how much risk you're willing to take, how far out in the desert you'll go, so they vary. But the, the price also varies if you're willing to do other things. So if you're willing to guide or you're willing to what, smuggle narcotics or you're You know, I heard that, that's interesting, Ms. Scott, I appreciate you mentioning that, that they actually, if you'll backpack that heroin or cocaine or fentanyl, your passage is somewhat considered paid if you're willing to be a drug mule rather than a slave, is that correct? That is how some people cross, yes. Ms. Nobles, have you heard anything from the Biden administration concerning the loss of your daughter? No, I haven't. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, with that, I'm going to yield back. Chairman, yields back. For what purpose does